Hello, my name is Harper, and I am a transgender man, and today I am going to be documenting and talking about my experience with top surgery. This is actually part one of my top surgery experience videos. I've decided to break it up into two videos, because if not, it would be so long, because I am a data hoarder, <laughs> and I like to document every single thing, and the just... This is so long. <laughs> I personally like to micromanage every single aspect of my life, and I like to know everything ahead of time, so this, for I would have loved a resource like this, this would be a godsend for me. And so that's why I'm basically making this video in such detail to, you know, let other people know exactly what's going to happen. So yeah, in this video I'm going to be talking about things like appointments and like the surgery itself, like getting there and stuff. And then in my second video I am going to be talking more about like my personal experience. So like more like movement kind of things, the pain levels, that sort of thing, how I felt about it, how I do feel about it, and also the reveal. So <laughs> if that's what you're here for then you can skedaddle along to the other video. Um, but yeah, if you want to hear about the actual process, stay here. For those who don't know, I am in British Columbia, Canada, specifically Victoria, and so I got surgery with Dr. Chris Taylor here in Victoria, British Columbia, and I got a double incision uh, surgery with free nipple grafts. So first a really quick rundown of like the process before, like, the actual surgery. So, get top surgery in British Columbia. You first need to get referred to a qualified assessor for top surgery, and you will have usually one to two uh, appointments of assessment with that qualified assessor, who will, if they deem you, like, all good for top surgery, they will send your doctor or your GP a letter basically just saying, like, hey, this person's great for surgery, and then your doctor will send that to Transcare BC. After this, you will get put on a waiting list, and that waiting list is for Transcare BC to call you to ask which surgeon you would like to go with. And once you pick your surgeon, you will be then transferred to their waiting list, and they will give you a call to schedule a consult. You have your consultation with your surgeon, and you discuss your options and what you want and stuff, and then they send you on your way to wait, and you just don't hear from them for like months on end, but they will email you with your date eventually. It took a couple months for me. So you get your date, and then at least two weeks beforehand, you have to get your pre-operation appointment with your GP, which is basically just a general checkup. So when you get your date, you will also get a bunch of PDF documents that will detail, like, things about post-op care, things to do in preparation for surgery, and things to expect. Basically a rundown of how this rodeo is going to go. And in those documents, they will tell you that you have to have a bath with a CHG sponge the night before and the morning of your surgery. You also have to fast from midnight of the night before your surgery to your surgery because you're, you're gonna go under. So we get to the hospital and we check in and then I'm taken to another separate room uh, for me to change into a hospital gown robe thing uh, and I'm allowed to keep my underwear on, but everything else has to go. I then have to lay down on one of like the hospital bed stretcher things, and I have very nice warm blankets placed on me. It's it's very, very nice. And I eventually had like six blankets on me, even though one of the people said that you're only supposed to have four. But people just kept asking if I wanted blankets, so I kept saying yes! <laughs> I got an IV put in, which was the worst part. I was dreading that the most. Like, surgery? Yeah, whatever. The IV? Holy crap. It was not as bad as I thought it would be, so maybe that's a relief to you. I also wanted to mention here that I was asked what my preferred name and pronouns were, so they're all really, really respectful, and I really appreciated that. Around 10-ish, I was wheeled into, like, a holding area, and I stayed there for quite a while. I, there was no clock, so I, I have no idea how long. Um, but I was just lying down in this little bed thing with my all of my warm, heated blankets on, and uh, several nurses came by to talk to me a couple times and check paperwork, but mostly I was just staring at this iceberg painting that was just there. <laughs> Most of the questions that people asked me were like, do I have any allergies? Are there any, you know, uh, medical conditions that I have that they should know about? The anesthesiologist also asked me about my height and my weight and my drinking and smoking habits, and I did mention to him that I had very mild asthma. I've always had very as mild asthma, but it's usually just triggered with um, exercise, and so he said that well, surgery is kind of like exercise, so he said he would give me some inhaler puffs, like, right before surgery. 
Dr. Taylor also came by while I was in the holding area, got to sit up and like, he looked at my chest again and marked it up with a, with a marker, and he, even though during my consult he said that I was not an option for um, Perry, he did say that if I wanted I could get Perry, like, even though we were, like, here and ready to go for, like, double incision. <laughs> After what felt like an hour or two afterwards, I was wheeled into the OR. I then, like, wiggled and scooched myself onto the operating table, and they strapped down my left arm, my legs, and I think they strapped down my head? They also put some stickers on me to monitor my heart rate, and they also gave me, like, the, the like, blood pressure thing around the arm, and... Then I was given my inhaler puffs, and then Dr. Taylor and his team kind of approached the operating table, and he asked me to confirm who I was and what I was getting. Then they gave me the oxygen mask, which they also put, like, anesthetic in, and I've never ever gone under. I've never had, like, surgery like this before, so this was, like, I had no idea what to expect. They asked me to take deep breaths, and I had my eyes closed for most of it, but, like, Towards the end, I opened them, and I, I it made me so dizzy and like lightheaded. So like, it was definitely working. It was definitely like falling asleep. Like I, I just didn't feel myself go, and I just woke up. So when I woke up, I felt like I was drunk. That is like the the number one thing I remember saying to my partner and my mom. Um, I just felt drunk, and so it wasn't like I was like, I don't know, delirious, but I was still a bit like. Lucy. And I woke up in space close to the like holding area that I was in before, and I was still- I was in like, again, in, in like a bed with like warm blankets on top of me. There was one of the OR nurses that I remember that was doing paperwork beside me, and I uh, asked if I could go to the bathroom, because I really needed to pee. <laughs> she wheeled me my bed like really close to the bathroom door, got me one of those like IV bag holder stand things, wheelie ones. I was totally fine doing that myself. I was really worried about that, like, whether I could, you know, go to the bathroom by myself, like, post-op. And yeah, you totally can. You totally can. It's fine. I went literally, like, ten minutes after I woke up. And after that, I just, like, was wheeled back to the holding area, and I just stayed there for a while. Two people then came over with my vets, which is this. It's it's kind of gross and like I've got blood on it, so whoops. It has eye hooks on the front and it also has like a zipper and it's very very tight. It also has velcro on the shoulders so you can adjust that as well. And the brand is Marina Recovery in a size like, extra small because I'm an extra small lad. They cut holes in like the sides uh, for my drains and then they also uh, safety pinned the drains onto the little, like, this little lip thing at the bottom of the vest. So you don't have to worry about, I don't know, like, getting a lanyard or whatever. Because I was in between sizes, they went with the lower one being extra small. And when they put it on me, they asked me, one, if I could take deep breaths, and two, if I could yodel. So that was a lot of fun. I was then wheeled back into the first room that I was, like, taken to to undress and just kind of waited there. I was given time to rest and then my family came in, my family being my mom and my partner. <laughs> Someone then came in to uh, talk to me about post-op stuff, so they, you know, how to, they gave me instructions about, you know, like, showering, draining the drains, <laughs> and I was, like, given, like, a written package. I was also given um, a written package about, like, the drugs that I would take, you know, for, like, pain and stuff, and like for the first three days or so they had like a little schedule thing. Then I was told to put pants on and see if I could walk around. And then she came back, checked in with me, and okayed me to like get out of here. So I put my top on and a wheelchair was brought in for me and so, so I was wheeled out from the hospital. <laughs> The next day, so like one day post-op, I had my post-op appointment with uh, the nurse at Taylor's office. She opened my shirt and then she saw that like I had like the drain had leaked on the left side and then she also opened the vest which hurt a lot. One, I hadn't taken 
all of the pills that I was supposed to take. There was one, like, opioid that I was given that I, like, I don't know, I have, I had an irrational fear of being, like, becoming addicted to it. So I didn't take it that morning, and I regretted it when she took that vest off. It hurt so much, it felt so tight, so tender. Like, the compression is helping your skin stay together, basically. Keeping it all in, like, compressed and nice. And so when it was released, my, like, body had to do the work, and oh, it, it didn't feel good. She cut slits in, like, the, the bottom of this elastic here. Um, of the vest over here as well. There you go. Over there as well, uh, just so I could breathe better because it was really tight. The other surgeon that works in Taylor's office uh, came in, had a look, and was like, yep, you, you look good, man. <laughs> and I was like, thanks, man. I was also told that when we drained uh, under 30 milliliters of blood from the drains within a 24-hour period, like separately, like one drain and the other drain, not combined. I could get my drains out, so I would just have to call the office when that happened, and that happened really, really soon afterwards. And also, just before leaving uh, my post-op appointment, I also made an appointment to, you know, like, get the dressings off. As I said, four days later, I had my drains taken out. I called up Dr. Taylor's office, and then we scheduled an appointment for that Friday. In the appointment, I, again, I had to get undressed into a gown. Mary came in to remove everything. So she removed, like, the dressings. She snipped the stitches, you know, around the sides that were holding the drains in. And then it was ready to take the drains out. <laughs> so I had to lay down on the, like, table that you just have in, like, doctor's offices on my side. And have my arm, like, away from, like, here, because like the drain hole's like right here. I had to awkwardly be on my side like this, and then I was told to take deep breaths, and then she like pulled it out of me, and I could feel it. <laughs> the first one was not that painful, like it was fine. I, I was just taking deep breath. I could feel it like unraveling within me. It was just like, it was not comfortable, but it wasn't terrible. <laughs> the other one hurt a lot, like the left one. I think, I, yeah, I did the right one first and that was okay. And then the left one like hurt. I like tensed up and she was like, no, keep breathing, keep breathing. And she kept like pulling this tubing out. And I was like, ah. After that, I was allowed to like sit up and uh, I felt a lot better after that. Like it felt so freeing. I then got uh, a new dressing over top of like where they had just taken that one off. And they all, I also got some, some like little sticky dressing over top of the uh, drain holes so they would like bleed and yeah I was sent on my way. <laughs> so for getting the dressings off that was 16 days post-op. Again it was in Taylor's office. She first took off like the the sticky like big dressing bandage thing over top both of these while I was sitting. Didn't hurt too much, kind of pulled my skin. And then they they had like the yellow dressings with like sutures over top of the nips. And I just laid down and she snipped those off. Like she snipped the sutures and took, took the dressings off of my nips. And they were all like grody and dark and healing. The tissue that was sent off to the lab it was all good, not, it was all clean, so that was very reassuring. Again, Dr. Taylor was not in that day, so the other doctor came in to look and he said, you, you look, you look good, and I was like, thanks. The nurse took pictures of my chest and then she put some, like, uh, polysporin over top of my nipples and then put large gauze, uh, things over top of my, uh, nips and then, because I still had to wear the vest and she didn't want to, like, I don't know, damage them from friction, so I add the things over top of my nipples. I was also given a sheet with uh, stuff that detailed scar care. Then I made my one month appointment with Dr. Taylor. And last but not least, the one month appointment. I had this appointment 37 days post-op, and so that was one month and six days. So again, this appointment was at Dr. Taylor's office, but he did have to be there this time uh, to look at my chest for my one month post-op, unlike the other ones, which uh, was mainly done by uh, the nurse Mary. Dr. Taylor came in and he took off the Steri strips that were 
on my scars. So he just took those off. I was so careful that like, you know, I can't, can't let anything happen to them. And then he's just like, oh yeah, those can come off. I was like, okay. He also uh, picked off like the, the dark scabbing that was on my nipples. Like a lot of it had fallen off already, but he just like picked it off and said it was fine. We then talked about scar care stuff. He said that scar strips aren't really necessary and don't often do a lot, but because I'm darker, um, I got melanin, um, that I am more prone to, uh, having kind of more, like, raised scars. I'm, I'm not sure if it's a melanin thing. I do know that, like, black people especially are, like, have, have, like, the highest chances of getting keloid scars. I'm not sure if that's because of melanin specifically or if it's just, like, a racial trait thing. But he did say that because I'm a little bit darker, I might want to invest in them. Again, back to melanin, because I'm a dark person, I had darker colored nipples and the color in your nipples is because of melanin and right now my nipples are quite kind of like patchy um it's very pink in the middle and there's a little kind of patches around that are like the, the original color like kind of like darker brown and he said that because like melanin like in your nipples relies so heavily on like blood flow and continuous blood flow that the melanin might not come back to my nipples and i'm not actually that concerned. I just have like cool patchy nipples now. He also said if the scars start to thicken up to call him and we could treat it with like a steroid injection, I think he said. He then left and then Mary came in. She did some measurements like very similar to the ones that she did it at my consult, like from the center of my chest like to the nipple and she measured like my nipple circumference. She said I could stop wearing the vest and I had two questions for her. I asked if I could massage my scars yet because I was feeling some like tightness in here and she said that was fine. I also asked if there was any detrimental effects to wearing the vest any longer, particularly because I wanted to wear my vest at work uh, for a little bit just until I was comfortable and she said that was fine. She also said that any more of like the scabs and the glue would come off in the shower uh, so I didn't have to worry about that. And then I left and I have one more appointment scheduled for my like three month appointment in early July. So yeah, that was a really long video, I think. I'll try to cut it down. Again, I, I'm doing this because I know that for me personally, a video like this would have been so reassuring and helpful because I have a lot of anxiety about things that like when I don't know what's gonna happen and so just like a very detailed step-by-step -step, like description of the process I would have loved that so like maybe someone out there would also love that anyway if you made it far this far in the video thank you <laughs> and now I think if you want to hear about like the actual like personal feelings and experiences of my time post-op you know and you want to see my chest reveal, which I think half of the people here will be wanting to see, you should head on over to the other video where I talk about those things. Anyway, my name is Harper and I'm going to be signing out, but not really, and I'm going to the other video. See ya.